Russia is accusing Ukraine of developing biological weapons and says the U.S. is helping them. This would go against international treaties and put a lot of people at risk. But is it true? Welcome to America Uncovered. I'm Matt Ganezda, filling in for Chris Chappell, who's still on vacation. So last week, Russia accused Ukraine of having an illegal bioweapons program. Russia says it knows this because it found incriminating documents from Ukraine's health ministry after it invaded Ukraine. So they're saying Ukraine did a bad thing, and they know this after doing a bad thing themselves. This is like a burglar saying, I found a meth lab in their basement, so you really shouldn't be mad at me for breaking in or for bombing that maternity ward. This is the document. Russia claims it shows the Ukrainian government gave orders to destroy the bioweapons before they fell into Russia's hands. Not only that, Russia says that the U.S. is secretly funding Ukrainian biolabs that have components of biological weapons. I don't know what Russia's so afraid of, though. What's the worst thing that could possibly come from a bioweapons lab? Oh. Right. Here's Russia's foreign ministry spokeswoman. They were carried out by Kiev and financed by the United States. Of course, it is out of the question they were used in a peaceful way to benefit science and peace as they were financed by the United States Department of Defense. China was quick to join Russia in condemning the U.S. for its alleged bioweapons program in Ukraine. Makes sense that China was offended. After all, committing large-scale atrocities on humanity is their job. And U.S. officials were quick to deny the allegations. The Russian accusations uh, are absurd. They're laughable. And, uh, you know, in the words of my Irish Catholic grandfather, a bunch of malarkey. Wait, John Kirby's grandfather is Joe Biden? That's a bunch of malarkey. And U.S. officials pointed out that it's Russia that has bioweapons programs. Russia has a history also of inventing outright lies like this, which is the suggestion that the United States has a chemical and biological weapons program, or Ukraine does, that they're operating. Russia is the one, is the country that has a chemical and biological weapons programs. Uh, so to be uh, very clear, uh, the United States government uh, does not own or operate biological laboratories in Ukraine, full stop. So it was kind of a surprise when the U.S. Undersecretary of State for Political Affairs, Victoria Newland, said this. Does Ukraine have chemical or biological weapons? Uh, Ukraine has uh, biological research facilities. Hold up. Does that mean Russia was telling the truth? If they were, then that means everything I thought was a lie might actually be true. I knew it. Santa is real. Newland's response should have been a simple no if what other U.S. officials said was true. I mean, for her to hesitate like that just made it look like the U.S. had something to hide. Then she said this. Ukraine has uh, biological research facilities which, in fact, we are now quite concerned Russian troops, Russian forces, may be seeking to uh, gain control of. So we are working with the Ukrainians on how they can prevent any of those research materials from falling into the hands of uh, Russian forces should they approach. Oh, so before we pat Russia on the back for telling the truth for once, they're only doing it to justify taking control of biological weapons. That's like a kid helping an old lady cross the street just so he can steal the gun from her purse. So does Ukraine actually have biolabs that could fall into Russian hands? Fox opinion host Tucker Carlson thinks so. What? You mean secret biolabs? Like the secret biolabs Ukraine definitely doesn't have? Ukraine has those? Yes, it does. Liberal media were quick to label Carlson a conspiracy theorist who's spreading Russian and Chinese propaganda. To be fair to Tucker Carlson, he's not actually saying the same thing Russian and Chinese propaganda are, but he does think that the U.S. government is lying. 
No one denies that Russia lies, of course, and has for a long time. That Russian propaganda is absolutely real, of course. That's not for debate. That's all true. The question is, why is the United States funding these bio labs that are not doing anything close to what the Pentagon claims they are doing? So who's right? Well, it's time for another segment of Wait, Is That True? Right after this short commercial break. Welcome back to another segment of Wait, Is That True? Russia has accused the United States of funding at least 30 bio labs in Ukraine and making deadly biological weapons things like plague, anthrax, cholera, tularemia, and other lethal disease-infecting agents. If true, then this would be the most upsetting chemical agents funded by the West since Axe Body Spray. I'd rather be on an elevator with a guy covered in anthrax than dark temptation. The goal of these biolabs, according to Russia, is to create bioweapons that target certain ethnic groups, like Russians. Yes, a bioweapon so intelligent that it can distinguish ethnic Russians from ethnic Ukrainians. I know you may think there's basically no distinction there, but as Putin sees it, there's a big difference. The bioweapon would only target people who look good shirtless on a horse. And in case you were wondering what exactly a bioweapon is, the UN defines it as microorganisms like viruses, bacteria, fungi, or other toxins that are meant to cause disease or death in humans, animals, or plants. Wait, fungi can be a bioweapon? I just knew that the floor of my gym shower is committing crimes against humanity. One example of a bioweapon would be anthrax, a bacteria that can be weaponized. We heard about anthrax following 9-11 when sending people envelopes with anthrax was trendy among wannabe terrorists. Now, Russia says it has evidence that this Ukraine-based biological research not only got U.S. funding, but was also being led by U.S. specialists, and that it's doing it all in secret. So let's take these one by one. First, Russia claims the U.S. is involved in research that could be used to make biological weapons. The U.S. has actually been pretty open about its work with Ukraine to counter biological threats, and that includes research. This research is done through the Department of Defense's Biological Threat Reduction Program which was created to help former Soviet countries destroy their stockpiles of nuclear, chemical, and biological weapons after the fall of the Soviet Union. The U.S. has been doing this since the early 1990s. In 2005, the Department of Defense signed an agreement with Ukraine to help prevent the proliferation of biological weapons. So it's been 17 years, and they still haven't finished destroying those stockpiles? How long does it take? The answer, of course, is forever, because when have you ever heard of a government bureaucrat saying, we're done here. There's no need to give our program any more money. So work with Ukrainian biolabs seems to have continued, but in another form. The U.S. admits it does do research with Ukraine on biological threats, but it's only for defense purposes. The U.S. says it's studying biological threats, but not using it to make weapons which sounds to me like an excuse a guy would give when his wife catches him looking at ads for sexy singles in his area. <laughs> no, honey, I was just doing research on how to defend against them. The research does apparently involve working with some dangerous stuff. The World Health Organization says it strongly recommended to the Ministry of Health in Ukraine and other responsible bodies to destroy high threat pathogens to prevent any potential spills. If only the WHO gave that same warning to another biolab about two and a half years ago. And speaking of the Wuhan Institute of Virology, as far as we know, that lab was experimenting with coronaviruses, doing research on how to make them more transmissible, called gain of function. The U.S. was partially funding that research. Why? To help scientists learn how to prevent the next pandemic. <laughs> but oops, right? And that's the problem. You can't do research on deadly pathogens without risking that these deadly pathogens could accidentally leak out or that the lab will be taken over by this guy and then used for nefarious purposes. So yes, there's an important theoretical distinction between scientific research and making bioweapons. But in practice, one could accidentally or on purpose lead to the other. And that's the friggin' problem. Although, speaking of the Wuhan Institute of Virology, it's important to say here that we have lots of evidence 
they were doing gain-of-function experiments to make coronaviruses more dangerous to humans. We don't currently have any evidence that these biolabs in Ukraine were making viruses more dangerous. Now, according to the Pentagon, after Russia launched its unlawful invasion of Ukraine, the Ukrainian Ministry of Health responsibly ordered the safe and secure disposal of samples. Wait, after the invasion started? That seems to be a bit late to start destroying samples. And it would explain Victoria Newland's concerns about dangerous research material getting into Russian hands. But as I said, just having dangerous pathogens in a lab does not mean Ukraine was using them to make bioweapons. It could just be researching how to mitigate future threats from those pathogens. Guys, they were just trying to defend themselves from the sexy singles in their area. Of course, it is possible Ukraine and the U.S. also have a secret bioweapons program. But if they do, Russia hasn't shared any incriminating evidence yet. Typical Russians. They're still like the Soviet Union. They say they're going to share, but in practice they never do. Russia convened a UN national security meeting to discuss this issue last Friday. Russia said it had information about a research project that studied infectious diseases in migratory birds. It accused Ukraine, the US, and NATO allies of working together on it. The goal is to study the possibility of spreading particularly dangerous infections using migratory birds. And this includes the highly pathogenic influenza H5N1. Again, a program like this could be studying how to prevent H5N1 from spreading. Just because it exists doesn't mean it's intended as a weapon. Kind of like a catapult filled with knives. It's only as nefarious as where it's pointing. But I get it. In the Putin way of thinking, what's the use of playing with dangerous things if you can't use them against your enemies? Like former Russian spies. Or political opponents who get poisoned in their underwear. Talk about a sick sense of humor. Although it makes a great excuse for your roommate to never change his boxers. I'm not disgusting. I'm cautious. Not today, Putin. The U.S. and its allies have dismissed Russia's claims as a classic disinformation campaign. Russia is attempting to use the Security Council to legitimize disinformation and deceive people to justify President Putin's war of choice. As for Russia's claim that the research is being led by U.S. specialists, without evidence of these programs, it's hard to say. Just because you believe in it doesn't make it true. <sighs> like Santa, I guess the world doesn't need another leader from a frozen land flying in and dropping items on children. What we can say is that this does seem to be a classic case of what I call too much nuance for television. You'll notice that a lot of what Russia said seems to be true. There are research labs in Ukraine studying dangerous pathogens. America does fund labs in Ukraine. And Ukraine could very well be studying infectious diseases in migratory birds. There also seems to be evidence that Ukraine's health ministry ordered the destruction of dangerous biological research samples. But that does not mean the labs were specifically trying to weaponize these infectious diseases. And that's why disinformation is so insidious. It uses some truth to create the impression everything is true, but it actually twists certain things to fit a false narrative. Kind of like the rumor that Mark Zuckerberg is actually a human. Seems almost plausible, doesn't it? That's what the alien android wants you to think. Anyway, what Russia hasn't proven here is that the U.S. or Ukraine are involved in any bioweapons program. And in fact, the U.N. says it doesn't have any evidence either. The United Nations is not aware of any biological weapons programs. Russia, Ukraine, and the U.S. are all part of the International Biological Weapons Convention. This is a treaty that prohibits the development, production, acquisition, transfer, stockpiling, and use of biological and toxin weapons. Sadly, that doesn't include Axe body spray. Article 6 of this treaty says any member can ask the UN Security Council to investigate if it suspects another member is developing bioweapons. But the UN says so far Russia has not asked for this. In fact, no one has ever asked for this. It's also worth mentioning that this isn't the first time Russia has accused the US of funding bioweapons research in a neighboring country that Russia just happened to have a small war with. I'm talking about Georgia. Back in 2012, a Russian official accused Georgia of sabotaging Russia with African swine fever, which affects pigs but not humans. While accusing Georgia of spreading the swine fever on purpose, 
that Russian official also made pointed remarks about a U.S.-funded biological research facility in Georgia's capital. Russia ramped up attacks on another U.S.-funded biolab in Georgia in 2018, right after Russian agents were caught poisoning people in the U.K. That's some grade-A deflection. Russia went so far as to threaten diplomatic and military measures in response to what they called a large-scale U.S. military biological program in states bordering the Russian Federation. Sound familiar? In this case, the BBC did an investigation that found Russia's claims about deadly experiments at the Georgia lab to be false. The Georgia lab was also investigated by a group of international experts who found nothing wrong. So, Russia gonna Russia. And after the break, I'll talk about why Russia might be the one with bioweapons in Ukraine. Welcome back. The U.S. government is warning that Russia may use biological weapons against Ukraine. They not only have the capacity, they have a history of using chemical and biological weapons. That's why your roommate says he never changes his underwear. The Biden administration says this could be a Russian false flag operation, an attempt to make its own actions look like those of someone else. Russia has a track record of falsely accusing other countries of the very violations that Russia itself is perpetrating. And the fact that China is backing Russia up doesn't help their case since false flags are literally made in China. And speaking of China, it's just like their disinformation campaign on COVID. After people started asking questions about a possible Wuhan lab leak, China started pointing to all the U.S. funded biolabs around the world, including Ukraine. It's all part of China's claim that the U.S. military actually manufactured the coronavirus in Fort Detrick in the U.S. And while the Biden administration is bracing for Russia to be revealed as the ones with biological weapons, it's not clear what it would do if Russia were to actually cross that line. Your White House has said that, that Russia may use chemical weapons or create a false flag operation to use them. What evidence have you seen showing that? And would the U.S. have a military response if Putin does launch a chemical weapons attack? I'm not going to speak about the intelligence, but, you, but uh, Russia would pay a severe price if they use chemical weapons. The Biden administration doesn't want to get involved militarily in Ukraine, which is why it shied away from supplying the country fighter jets earlier this month. Both the U.S. and Poland are worried that if they did send fighter jets, Putin would see them as getting involved and it could trigger World War III, which no one wants. Because if Spider-Man and X-Men have taught us anything, the third one in the trilogy is always the worst. So for now, it seems Biden is not planning to do what Obama did when he said the Assad regime in Syria using chemical weapons was a red line. Which may be for the better because it ended up not being a red line once the regime crossed it. It was more of a double yellow line. You're not supposed to cross them, but I mean, if no one's looking, right? And speaking of Syria, guess who still supported the Assad regime after it used chemical weapons on its own people? Yes, that's right, Vladimir Putin. So Putin's only real problem with these kinds of weapons seems to be letting them go to waste. So what do you think about Russia's claims of a Ukrainian bioweapons program? Leave your comments below. And in case you didn't hear, America Uncovered is now on the social media platform Locals. It's free to join, plus paying supporters get to comment and interact with us. And we're also on Patreon. Contribute a dollar or more per episode there to help us keep this show going. Once again, I'm Matt Ganezda. Thanks for watching America Uncovered.